Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm founder of thesedge.org, where change bankers come to launch and grow successful social enterprises. So today I want to talk about something related to Simon Sinek's famous talk and concept about starting with why. So he argues that most organizations really struggle to pinpoint their why and understand the purpose of the work that they're doing. Now, something is a little different for social entrepreneurs like you. I think you guys totally know your why. You're super clear on your vision, and that's really not the block in terms of succeeding with your work. Now, the other layers of Simon's concept are that after the why, you want to look at the how, which is what makes you unique. How do you deliver what you deliver, and how does that set you apart from the competition? What's your strategy? And the final piece, uh, ring around the puzzle, is the what. So what products and services do you deliver? What activities do you take every day? Now that one is pretty straightforward as well, because that tends to be what we jump to. We, as social entrepreneurs, have this vision for what we want to achieve, and we have an idea of the solution and what we want to deliver every day. Okay, so what's missing then? The how, this middle piece that's connecting the vision and the what the why and the what. How do you make sure that things actually translate in your business? And I believe that this how is really the messy part for social entrepreneurs, and it's the part that I want to dive into a little bit deeper to understand better. So in the last few years, as I've been building my business, I'm starting to put together some information in terms of what makes up this how and I think it's a lot more than just one thing that allows you to succeed when you're designing your strategy and connecting that vision and your day-to-day -day activities. So depending who you ask, some people might say, the most important thing in your strategy is to just hustle. If I work hard, I'll make it, I'll make it happen. Others believe that the most important thing to make your how work is to really believe in what you're doing. If I believe hard enough in what I'm doing, I'll make it work and it will happen. Others gravitate towards the idea that tools and resources and frameworks and information will be the answer. If I learn enough, I'll make it work and it will happen. And yet others tend to want to experiment and innovate and believe that if I try enough different things, something will work, I'll make it happen. And the last thing is finally relationships. If I meet the right people, if I build the right relationships, it will all work out. Now, all of these things are so important, but here's the thing. I think each of us as individuals are naturally drawn to excel in one or maybe a couple of those pillars. And often we're missing the other pillars and it can, I think, be the detriment of our business. So I've been realizing more and more how crucial it is to have a balanced focus on all of these pillars in order to actually make things work and translate that big vision for change into the actions that you're going to spend your time on and spend time on things that will not only create a sustainable income for yourself but also create the impact that you wish to see. So it's definitely not necessarily easy but I feel like one of the core skills that helps guide all of these pillars and helps you keep them in balance and determines helps you determine when and what to focus on as you're building this how of your social enterprise. And that is self-leadership. So no one is calling the shots on your social enterprise except for you. Of course, you can collaborate with a team, you can grow the support um, that helps you do what you do, but ultimately the direction that you take your business is up to you. And the how that you focus on, the design of your business, it all comes down to what you decide, what you choose, and no one else can actually make those decisions for you. It's your job to be at the helm of your business and to lead it and make those decisions, um, and not just for the success of your business, but for yourself. You need to lead yourself in terms of navigating how to um, make these decisions on all of these different pillars and put things together so that it works in your business. And one of the reasons I think this is so challenging is because it's just you, and if you're asking yourself to lead yourself, uh, it's very meta. You're kind of in your own head, and if you think about um, someone on the outside giving advice and giving support and critiquing, it's a lot easier to 
tell someone else, hey, I think you need to look at this. Um, but of course, it comes down to the individual to manage it themselves. And that's really tough when you're in your own head. So I do think this is one of the most important skills you can develop as a social entrepreneur. And it's definitely not a skill that you learn and it ends. It's going to be an ongoing process that I imagine will, will continue for, you know, um, my whole life and your whole life. It's part of the job. So a business strategist that I really admire and respect, her name is Tara Gentili, and I was at a conference of hers a few weeks ago, and she said something that really stuck with me. Um, she was talking about self-leadership in your business, and she summed it all up in one sentence. Be the leader that your business deserves. This rang so true for me as a social entrepreneur. You have this desire to make change in the world, and you're compelled to make that change happen through your unique skills and the vision that you have in your head, but it's up to you and you alone to bring it into the world. And your idea, your business, that vision that you have in your head, it demands for you to step up as a leader and be the leader that it deserves to get it going and get it off the ground and keep it going. So if you're struggling in your work, and, and like I said, this is not a one-time thing, this is gonna be a continual discussion in, in your head as you lead yourself. Um, but I wanna challenge you to ask yourself, out of those pillars in the how, where might you be lacking in terms of how you can support yourself to succeed in those areas? And you need to design a way for you to manage these pillars because for example, hustle alone just doesn't cut it. I was talking to my friend the other day and she was saying how she loves to hustle. She thrives on it, having a long to-do list and getting out there and taking action. But she knows that she does not like to decide what to hustle on. She wants someone else to lead her in that regard and guide that energy. And similarly, although it's so important, being aware of your limiting beliefs and the ways in which your mindset might block your progress is so huge. But alone, that's not enough to get things going. Um, and of course, because all the information and tools and resources and roadmaps in the world are just not enough on their own. If that were the case, the rise of the internet would mean we were all masterful entrepreneurs and had it all figured out. And you and I both know that's not the case. <laughs> and innovation alone is not enough. Again, it's so crucial, but you, you need to be open to experiment and adapt along the way but you also need to know when to buckle down and focus and do the same thing over and over and again, because it works. And finally, building the right relationships is not enough on its own. So crucial, but it doesn't happen by accident. In the end, you need to lead yourself in terms of forming the relationships that make sense um, and maybe cutting the relationships that don't make sense and building the right team. You're the one who chooses who you're gonna work with and how you wanna work with them. So again, that comes back to you. So really it's not easy, but recognizing these gaps in how you choose to lead yourself and lead your business, I think it could be the missing link if you're struggling um, to make things happen in your work. And you need to step up and design the solutions or create the environment and the context that's conducive to help you work through and manage these pillars and get them into alignment and into balance. So making these choices to set yourself up for success again is is not necessarily easy it's constant learning but in the next video this week i'm going to share some ideas that i have about how you might be able to focus on creating that environment where you um, can grow your skills in self-leadership and create a space where you're thriving and feeling happy to step up and manage your business and lead yourself and solve the how of how you want to deliver the vision you see, um, the vision for change you see in the world. So, see you next time.